So I was reading my comments on some of my YouTube videos and I found one comment from an individual who didn't think that my idea of using a fan for the defrost uh, mode had much merit. And so maybe he misunderstood the process in which I was talking about, but I mentioned in a couple of past videos in some hints and tips and also in the Ten Commandments video about using a fan instead of the Harvest Right defrost mode. This is just a, a fan I threw together that sits upon top of the top shelf that blows air into the chamber to uh, not to defrost all the ice. It's just to warm up the chamber enough to slide the, the ice out into a bucket underneath and then you can immediately start a new cycle with a nice cold chamber. So anyway, I went ahead and made this video that goes deeper into this procedure and a little bit more scientific because I was using some stated quantities of ice and whatnot. So anyway, here's the video. I have another load of ice. I'm going to freeze dry water again. What we're going to do, we're going to have a competition between two methods of defrosting the Harvest Right freeze dryer. Now in the past, I basically spoke of the merits of how just a, a basic little electric fan is better to defrost than using the heating pads on, on the Harvest Right freeze dryer. My position is that if you use the heating pads, it heats the freeze dryer up too much and then you have to cool it back down to start a new batch where if you use just a little oscillating fan you just want to melt the ice in the chamber enough to slide the whole ice ring out and then you start from there and so you have a nice cold chamber to start a new cycle versus having a hot chamber so the competition we're going to have is kind of like a little bit of a race the starting point is going to be when the cycle is over. Now when I usually freeze dry ice, each of these trays has 1000 grams of water. And from doing this for other projects, I know my freeze dry is going to take about 24 hours to take the water and the ice from the trays and to load up the, the ice ring of the chamber. So, at 24 hours, that's the starting gun. When all the water has sublimated, that's when we're going to start. So, the first cycle, I'm going to use my oscillating fan, which really doesn't oscillate, it's just a fan. The second batch is going to be using the Harvest Strike heating, heating pads that are underneath and above each tray. So, we're going to go ahead and start this up, and you'll see as we go, we're going to compare it and see how fast we can do a turnaround because that's what it, this all boils down to is how fast you can go from one batch to the next batch. I say you can do it faster with a fan versus doing it with the heating pads. So here we go. I'm coming up on 24 hours. It's still in the drying stage. At 24 hours I'm going to stop it and then start the defrost. Uh, it's not in the final dry, but if you take a look in here, all the trays are empty. So all the ice has already sublimated. And so at 24 hours, we're going to do the defrost challenge. It just barely went into a final dry just now. Okay, we're at 24 hours, so the race begins. Okay, so we're going to take out the gasket, and we're going to take the little fan I have. And we're going to go ahead and start defrosting it, and when I can pull the shelf out and have all the ice fall out, that when we're going to start the new batch. And I gotta take out the tray. We're 
15 minutes in. That still won't come out yet. We're at 30 minutes. That still wedged in there pretty good. 45 minutes. That still in there. We're at one hour. Still frozen in there. Hour and 15 minutes. It's getting looser, but not ready to come out. Just as a side note, when I made my past videos, I had the fan mounted to a board like this. Well, it fell out and kind of smashed my uh, mount. That's why I have this little temporary fan sitting like that. We're coming up on an hour and a half, and just as a side note, the two uh, temperature gauges in my house show that the house is 68 degrees right now. 68 degrees in the hallway, 69 degrees in the kitchen. An hour and a half, getting a little bit looser. When I did my original, my original video, my freeze dryer was out in the garage where it was much warmer. If this was in the summertime, I've seen uh, the fan defrost the uh, freeze dryer in as little as 30 minutes. So this is probably going to take a little bit longer, but we're going to keep everything consistent whether I'm using the fan or the Harvest Right defrost mode. Hour and 45 minutes. Still not yet. We're at two hours now. Same time that the normal defrost would work. Okay, we have movement. So down below here, I have my big Rubbermaid bucket. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out along with the ice ring. Okay, so the chamber is empty now. I'm just going to wipe out a little, some of the water out of here. And we're going to go put it back in. Along with the gasket. We're going to shut the door. Close the valve. And we're going to go ahead and start it up and we get the 15 minute notice to uh, wait 15 minutes and then put it in the trays. Okay, so we're at 15 minutes. We're going to hit continue. And I have four trays with a thousand grams of frozen ice in each tray. The finish line for this little contest is when the vacuum pump turns on at zero, zero degrees. So right now we're at 34 degrees and we'll see how long it takes to get us there. We're at 21 degrees and we're into this by two hours, 19 minutes. Eight degrees, almost two and a half hours. At 2.46, we're at zero degrees. This is the time to beat. Okay, we're at 24 hours. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the defrost cycle. trays are empty.
close the door and continue. Once this time hits zero two hours from now, we're going to go ahead and put in four trays with 1,000 grams each back into the chamber and we're going to start the new cycle and the finish line is when it reaches zero degrees and the vacuum pump starts up. Okay, so we went through our two hours defrost and we still have ice in the chamber so we're going to have to keep on going on this route until all the ice in the chamber is done. I'm now an hour and 12 minutes into the second defrosting cycle and there still is ice in the chamber. More importantly, we have just surpassed the time it took the first defrosting method when I was just using the fan. So at this point in time, I was now putting food into the freeze dryer to begin a cycle and we are way behind using the defrost mode from Harvest Right. So if you look inside the chamber here you can see about half the ice is gone. We still have plenty of ice in here and I think it's probably going to take another defrost mode to get rid of all the ice and that's just going to take more time and more money to defrost the chamber this way. Okay we got three minutes, a little bit over three minutes left on the second defrost cycle and if we take a look inside here the ice is gone from the top, the ice is gone from this side, the ice is gone from this side but we have a little bit of ice up underneath so I think we're going to let this just run its course for three more minutes and then we'll go ahead and start a new cycle. Okay, so the defrost is done. We're going to go ahead and acknowledge that and we're going to go ahead and start the new cycle up. So we're cooling down the vacuum chamber and in 15 minutes we'll go ahead and put the uh, four trays of ice in and the temperature of the vacuum chamber is 151 degrees which is pretty warm. We're done with the pre-freeze so our chamber is still at 109 degrees and I'm ready to put in frozen food and this is one of the problems. My frozen food is going to start to thaw. We're going to go ahead and hit continue and we're going to load the trays. And we're four hours and 15 minutes into this cycle. We just passed the 32 degree mark, so we're actually freezing now. And we're into it four hours, 25 minutes. Okay, so we're down to zero. And we've got the pump on. So if you think about it, we went through two. Uh, defrost cycles plus an hour and a half for a freezing cycle. Now the trays I put into the freeze dryer, the material, the water, was already frozen. So could you imagine how long would it take if the food going into the freeze dryer was food that was not frozen? So we basically put almost nine pounds of ice into the freeze dryer to help it uh, come down to temperature faster than if we would have put regular food that were not, was not frozen into the freeze dryer. Here's one more thing to consider. With my fan running, I'm pulling 0.19 amps. Let's just say I'm pulling 0.2 amps. In the harvest right defrost mode, I'm pulling 6.93 amps. We'll just round that up to an even seven.